Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Oh my gosh. So, Arrow the Truth Spence Jr., he conducted an interview with Fight Hype. I've linked to it in my description. Shout out to them for the coverage. And Arrow Spence said he would he believes he will walk Keith Thurman down he says Keith Thurman's performance wasn't spectacular but let me break it down first of all go watch the interview first and foremost <laughs> it's funny and I want to give my thoughts it's funny how I get on here I get a prediction wrong out of so many I got right I get one wrong okay and the world goes crazy oh you're wrong you don't know shit about boxing ego okay then why are you tuned in? Why are you even commenting? If I'm nobody, I don't know anything, right? So seven reasons. I said it was a 50-50 fight. Danny Garcia, I picked him via unanimous decision and he lost a split decision. Meanwhile, in the comment section, a lot of you guys were saying, oh, Keith Thurman's gonna destroy him. He's gonna knock him out in the first three rounds, man. So whose prediction was more off? Me being realistic, saying it was a 50-50 fight and I'm picking Garcia to edge him via decision unanimous and he lost a split decision versus some of y'all were leaving comments on the ego fight club and all the videos leading up to this on my channel saying that keith thurman was going to pulverize danny garcia and have his face looking like meat and he's going to knock him out that was way off that was more off than me i said a decision y'all talking about knockout and there was no knockouts or knockdowns suffered on either side right but it is what it is it's just vindication when boxing trainers and actual boxers mirror the same things that i said if you go watch the errol spence jr interview i don't think he was like trying to bash keith thurman but like myself he was being honest and he says keith thurman did what he had to do he showed that he was strong he didn't have a spectacular performance i believe he let a lot of the later rounds go and he should have pressed on the gas which is in my post fight a lot of you guys were saying the same. Oh, you made the seven reasons. You're just salty. Why is Errol Spence saying it? He's saying exactly what the fuck I said. And he didn't make a seven reasons, right? That's just because that's what I seen. I don't care if Danny Garcia wins Keith Thurman. I just wanted to see it as a fight fan. You guys take this shit to another level. Like, what do you think I'm losing? I'm getting money off of the seven reasons video. It has like 20,000 views plus or something like that in less than a week you know what i'm saying what what how is it hurting me if i'm right i'm right if i'm wrong i'm wrong i it does not that serious to me that was my prediction and it wasn't accurate the end but it's, it's again funny when errol spence and probably others seen the fight just like i seen it so again errol spence he didn't make a seven reasons video but he's saying almost exactly what i was saying in the post fight he says keith thurman gave up some of them later rounds and he was basically running. That's Errol Spence Jr.'s words himself. And he didn't need to do that. He should have pressed on the gas, which is exactly what I was telling you guys on Twitter and what I was saying in my post fight video. Like, a lot of y'all need to learn how to break down boxing. I don't know everything, clearly. You know what I'm saying? So you can say whatever about me. I'm not saying I know everything, but I do watch the sport. I do respect the sport. And that's what you get when you get my commentary. I Keith Thurman did what he had to do to win fine i have no problem with that i have no problem with somebody outboxing another person however here i'm going to say this one time i'm not addressing everybody individually in comment section i don't have the time i was supposed to go to the virgil hunter gym this week i don't have time to independently address every concern i told you guys in the seven reasons i like keith thurman i like danny garcia i actually had the media day that's why you guys seen the coverage I, I have no problem covering keith thurman giving him accolades props he won that's fine but this with my constructive criticism for keith thurman was very simple and it sounds like errol spence jr has similar thoughts the only criticism i have is for any fighter not just keith thurman don't go from a working game plan and do something else when you don't need to do that period i said this with bradley versus vargas bradley was fighting jesse vargas 
stupid wild, like crazy, like just swinging, looping punches, and he was he was kind of reckless and wild, but it was effective. Jesse Vargas was getting bashed up in those early rounds. Tim Bradley basically did that, and he's a guy who's in shape, in condition, so he did that for 11 rounds, and Jesse Vargas had no answer for it, right? Follow me. Jesse Vargas didn't really, I thought he lost 11 rounds pretty much, right, to Timothy Bradley. However, for whatever reason, Tim Bradley chose to derive from a working game plan. And in the 12th round, he started to circle and box and move and try to be this boxer as if he's fighting um, Pacquiao or something like that. You know what I mean? Where you have to be smart and box more. But Jesse Vargas had never unlocked the Desert Storm Da Vinci Code, the Brad Vinci Code in the first 11 rounds so why would you adjust and do something totally different and subsequently as a result bradley nearly got knocked out in that 12th round because he switched from what he was doing that was effective now the same can be said with oscar de la hoya versus felix tito trinidad you were beating you were dogging tito trinidad and you leave stuff up to the imagination when you switch the game plan and people get mad why you bring up floyd i bring up floyd because he's the biggest star in boxing and people know his fights it's a very easy example to make if i use i could use examples from brandon reels versus richard abril but some of y'all motherfuckers never even seen that fight so it would be a pointless example if people don't recall the fight or never watched it so floyd's an easy and on top of that floyd as a boxer he's intelligent he does a lot right in there so he's an easy example but that's what makes floyd mayweather special he is going to stick to the game plan no matter what no matter if the crowd's booing no matter if it's working he's sticking to it the only time he will make those adjustments and changes is if the opponent forces that from him like Madonna Madonna had him on the ropes and was making it a dog fight he had to throw more punches or Madonna was going to try to take his head off period Zab Judah was beating him in to the punch with speed in those early rounds so he started digging to the body he had to adjust he had to don't go speed for speed for this dude because he's beating you at that game right and that's what it is with Keith Thurman I thought Here's my question to you. Is there anyone that's going to say Keith Thurman looked better in the last three rounds than he did in the first three rounds? And if you say that, then I don't even want you on my channel because you're an idiot. Straight up. It's clear and apparent that Keith Thurman looked much better, sharper, more dominant in those first three rounds than any of those later rounds or the last three rounds. And that's my point. Obviously, I'm not trying to get Keith Thurman knocked out. You have to be successful and smart and do what you have to do to win. So if that's how he thought he needed to win, fine. Errol Spence Jr. in this Fight Hype interview, he says he believes Danny Garcia's body shots were getting to him. And that's what was making him run. And those are Errol, Errol Spence Jr.'s words. But to me, Keith Thurman was actually more effective when he was doing just what the fuck he was doing in the first three rounds. And that's why those rounds were more dominant. When he clipped uh, Garcia in the first round, that was probably his best. That was probably one of his best succession of punches. And then he jumped right on him. Danny Garcia couldn't fuck with the speed and the power and then the awkwardness of, of Keith Thurman. So that's that's what I'm trying to say. It's no shade to Keith Thurman. He got his W. Shout out to that. You're two time now. You graduated from one time to two time. But again, my only constructive criticism, which I still believe, I don't care what y'all talking about in the comment section, is yes, you have to be safe, but I don't think you have to give away all of those rounds. You know what I'm saying? This was a big, meaningful fight on a big platform. It set an attendance record for the Barclays, and you were unifying. So, if that's how you felt you had to fight to stay safe, which I don't think because he was he was clearly staying safe in those first three rounds. Like he wasn't he wasn't getting like lumped up and then he was still beating Danny Garcia just popping in. So I think he should have took more stands. And that's that's really what it is. And I still feel the way. And you watch the interview with Errol Spence, he's saying what I was saying in the post fight, right? Keith Thurman, he used lateral movement. Maybe that's part of his game plan. 
but he didn't have to do that. Like, you look even the Danny Garcia versus Lamont Peterson fight. Lamont Peterson, he did the opposite of what Keith Thurman did. He started out slow, just jabbing, being defensive, making Danny Garcia chase. And in those later rounds, he starts sitting down on punches, throwing combinations, and really busting up Danny Garcia. And it looked like Lamont Peterson was on the verge of stopping Danny Garcia from the fatigue, right? Keith Thurman did the opposite. He started off dumbass strong in the first three rounds or so. And after round five or six, he he started to, I don't know if it was fatigue or whatever, but he started to incorporate a lot of movement in those championship rounds. And to me, the game plan, you always have to be safe. You have to be smart. But he was doing that and he was doing it more effectively in those early rounds. I don't know how else I can explain it to you guys and and that's what leave that's what made if he did what he did in the first three rounds and he did that a couple more times in in rounds like nine through twelve then it would have been a lopsided shutout for the most part right but he actually let Danny Garcia somewhat back into the fight even if you thought he won a unanimous decision he gave up rounds just like Errol Spence is saying just like Ego said right that's a fact he even said himself when he was talking to Jim Gray post fight, he says, oh, but judging by this, Jim Gray asked him, judging by the scorecard, right? He said, judging by the scorecard, you almost gave the fight away. And Keith Thurman responded, oh, no, I wasn't going to give it away. At, at the best, it would have been a draw. So he's acknowledging that he gave away rounds, because why would you say he at the at the worst, worst case scenario, it would have been a draw? So it is what it is. So if Keith Thurman is being critiqued for that aspect of his fight plan, then it is what it is. It, and it's just because he used movement. Like honestly, Floyd Mayweather, he doesn't he doesn't really do that. Usually as the fight wears on, that's where he starts to dog you in those championship rounds. Point blank period. If you watch Canelo Alvarez in the Mayweather the one fight, watch what Floyd watch the work he did in the eleventh round. Watch the Cotto fight with Mayweather when Mayweather he shot a nasty uppercut and almost stopped Cotto. Watch the twelfth round with Andre Berto where he hurt Andre Berto. So that's that's the difference. And again, you, you guys can say whatever you want. Oh, you hate Thurman and you're just salty and all this and that. But I call it like I see. If he had a flawless performance, then I would tell you that was flawless. Me personally, I was actually more impressed with the Sean Porter performance from Keith Thurman than I was um, with Keith Thurman versus Danny Garcia. That's my opinion. I thought what Sean Porter was doing and bringing to to his front door, I liked how he dealt with it, right? And it was overall a, a, a more complete fight for me. I mean, same can be said with Danny Garcia. I don't think he was flawless. I don't think he looked great. I, I think early, I thought he got a very slow start and he was probably gun shy because he got popped by Thurman and he felt that power and it took him a while to even work up the confidence or rhythm to start letting his hands go and putting, and I don't think he ever really let his hands go as much as he truly has in some other fights with Zab Judah, but maybe it's because he was in there with a, a punching welterweight who was awkward. I don't know. So, I mean, there's takeaways and, and cr criticism for both fighters that I could give, and I did give, and I, I'm, I still feel the same thing. I don't think Thurman, I mean, honestly, um, no one's trying to say Mickey, like obviously Mickey Bay got stopped by John Molina in the last round. That's because he was clowning around and he got lured into a dumb fight. He got lured into a John Molina fight and was horsing around. Keith Thurman, I'm not saying he should have did that, but he could have took more offensive stands and it would have been a more emphatic win. Like, damn, nobody's ever just shut Danny Garcia out. But instead, he gave up those later rounds like De La Hoya did to Trinidad and he left something to the imagination and you've seen that on the judges scorecard now that's the best way I can put it if you guys don't understand after this point you say I'm mad or I'm salty whatever it's, it's just gonna have to be that but that's what I'm that's my constructive criticism for the Keith Thurman performance I think what he was doing early was far more effective than what he did late right you, you watch a ton of elite level people like Andre Ward got better as the fight wore on. That's usually what happens with elite, you know what I mean, like the elite level fighters. Now, Keith Thurman is elite, 
but he did it the opposite way. He started off really good, and then he let Danny Garcia work his way. And I don't think he had to do that. I think he could have, he he could have made a few more impressions and, instead of burning up energy. It's just a weird gameplay to me. That's that's the best way to put it. Now, back to this interview. Errol Spence says he thinks he can walk Keith Thurman down and stop him. I've been I've been saying this is a great fight. Errol Spence also said. He believes his fight with Kell Brook does establish the number one welterweight. He doesn't feel Kell Brook looks spectacular. He said Danny Garcia can bounce back. He lost to a champion. It, see, this is the thing. Everyone wants to... I, I, that's why I hate this generation. It's just like everyone's super sensitive. You can't... If you say anything, you're racist or you hate this person, this and that. To me, it didn't sound like Errol Spence was throwing shade. He was just being honest with himself. And on top of that, he is a fighter. So, of course, he's going to be confident. I mean, what fighter is going to be like, oh, I think Keith Thurman's going to beat my ass. Why would he say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't think he's throwing shade. I think he's just being honest with what he's seen. If Keith Thurman looked like he did versus Sean Porter, I'm pretty sure Errol Spence probably, his immediate reaction would have been different. You know what I mean? I, I showed you guys a clip. Javante Tank Davis said he was falling asleep at the fight. These are all professional fighters. I don't think Thurman or Garcia, either one of them, had their career best performance at all. And as far as Spence versus Thurman, I love that fight. Floyd suggested it a long time ago. He said people are ducking Errol Spence, and it seems to be the case. But now it's getting good. Thurman has two belts now. Um, Spence is trying for a belt with Kell Brook, which is a dangerous fight for himself. If he does emerge, he says he wants to fight Thurman. And I like that attitude from him, and that's a unification. And then that'll be another full-fledged welterweight. Both guys can crack. Both guys have power. And as a fan, I would love to see that. And that would be crazy if they can get that type of fight done straight away. You know what I mean? It's already off to a great year, 2017. So that's that's kind of my breakdown of, on Errol Spence's comments and the whole Keith Thurman situation. You guys can um, be sensitive and think everybody's just out to get somebody or you just hate Thurman. Thurman looked sharp early. I just don't. I don't think he needed to switch the game plan. And and to me, that always is weird to me. Like, you look at Bradley's, and I even said this in The Seven Reasons, Bradley is another guy who's like kind of a wild cannon. Why did you try to, it, when you were fighting Jesse Vargas and winning successfully for 11 rounds, why did you start trying to outbox the taller man and then he was able to get your timing down in the final round? But you fought Ruslan Provotnikov, who has no defense, and the only way he could beat you is not by outboxing you, is landing a haymaker to your dome and knocking you out or hurting you very bad and getting you up out of there. You know he's not a better boxer than you, and you start fighting him like you're Rambo, like you're Gennady Golovkin, like you just this powerhouse and powerful welterweight that you could just walk through shots and he, he can't take your power. So to me, that I don't understand that with fighters when when I, I think they fight a weird game plan. You're trying to outbox Jesse Vargas, who is a 140 pounder, and you haven't been doing that for 11 rounds, but in the 12th round, you switch to that. And then that's when he times you and it hits you with the big right hand and almost knocks you out. But then there's a known knockout artist who has guys faces looking horrible, like Mauricio Herrera, who's, who's a crafty guy. When he fought Ruslan, his face looked terrible after the fight. Right, and that's the guy who you you try to go mano y mano with. It's kind of weird to me. Same thing with Keith Thurman. There would be nothing to even criticize had he done a little bit more of what he did early, late. Period. I thought he looked very sharp. He did again. A win is a win. He did what he had to do to win, or what he felt felt he needed to do. Me, my opinion. I don't think he had to do that to win. Like, I, I mean, Danny Garcia looked much slower than him. So he was just being able to peek his head in when he wants, get off his shots, and get out, right? You just don't want to get greedy with Danny Garcia. And he showed that he could do that for the, in the first four or five rounds. So I, I don't, honestly, I don't understand why he switched that. And you know what I'm saying? And left it up to interpretation because, again, is there anyone who's going to say that Thurman's first three rounds weren't weren't as good as his last three rounds it doesn't make sense and again when Danny Garcia did his best work is when it looked like Thurman was quote-unquote running or using more movement and almost taking rounds off and like throwing rounds away that's just how I seen it 
Thurman versus Spence. That's the one, that's the one I want to see. There's certain fights that I've always wanted to see, and in the welterweight division, that is it. Or if it's or if Brook beats Spence, then I want to see that. But the Brook Spence winner versus Thurman, that is the fight to be made. Just like a heavyweight, the fight I want to see is Deontay Wilder versus Andy Joshua. It's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. The interview is in the description of Errol Spence. He thinks he'll stop Keith Thurman. And, I mean, he makes a point because, obviously, Thurman doesn't like body shots. And someone was like, oh, someone left a comment. Who does like body shots? Nobody, dummy. I'm not saying anyone likes body shots, but certain people can deal with them a lot better than it appears that Thurman did versus Colazzo. You know what I'm saying? But a well-placed body shot is a motherfucker. You don't even have to have all the power in the world for a well-placed and it'll still fuck you up. So that's just a little two cents. Let me know what you guys think of the Errol Spence interview. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.